Do you want to enable secure authentication and authorization for your projects quickly? Let's discover Zitadel, a free open source alternative to AuthO, Amazon Cognito and Firebase. Zitadel provides everything you need to manage users, from authentication with social logins, SSO and MFA, to authorization with role-based access control with fine-grained permissions. In this video, we'll have a look at Zitadel features and add a login sign-up system allowing users to use their email address or Google into a React app. Before diving into the platform overview and discovering its features, let's see the options we have to start using it. You can use the official cloud version, providing a free tier up to 3 identity providers and 100 daily active users. Install it on your server by following one of their installation guides or use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy the self-hosted version on the cloud provider of your choice while we take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To install Zitadel using our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then deploy my first service, search for Zitadel and hit select. Choose between the different cloud providers, regions and service plans based on your needs. Then hit next. Adjust the different settings, choose your level of support, I will keep the free included one, and hit create service. Once the installation is finished, you will receive an email telling you your instance is ready. Follow the click here to get the password link. Click on this icon here to copy the password and access your instance with the admin UI link. We arrive on the login of our Zitadel instance and it is made with Zitadel 2. The first thing we will need is our username. We get it from this line, user, copy it, paste it and hit next. And now the same for the password. Click on the button and paste it here. Of course, you can replace it later. Hit next. And by default, multi-factor authentication is enabled. So we need to choose an authenticator, either an app or the device fingerprint. I will take this one from my MacBook. Hit next. I can name it a laptop, add security key. It will ask me to log in on my laptop. I will do it with Touch ID and perfectly, it has been verified. Now I will be able to use it to log in. Hit next and we arrive on our instance dashboard. We have a nice onboarding guide with different steps, creating a project, registering our app and login into your app. First, let's create our project. We decided to use React, so let's choose React Demo continue and now we are on our project so our project it doesn't mean one application inside one project you can have multiple application that will have the same users and the roles and authorizations now let's create our react application click on new and to know what to fill here let's choose it based on the language that we decided so here in this example we will choose react but you can see that you have backend languages such as Nest, Java, Go, or frontend full stack application, Next.js, or other full frontend frameworks such as Vue. So let's take React. And there are different ways to follow the guide, either by using the example app, it's a ready to use project, this is what we will do, or the step by step guide, which is how to add Zitazel to an existing code project. But we will need to follow those steps to create our application. So we need to choose user agent for the type of app, which is ideal for a single page application. Let's name it React App, continue. Authentication method, we'll take the recommended one, PKCE, hit continue. Then for the redirect, when someone logged in or logged out, they give us the example. Currently, we are in development mode, not for production, so we have to be sure that dev mode is true. And then we will be able to target localhost with callback and the root path. We don't forget to check development mode. We paste callback for when someone log in or sign up. And when we log out, you can redirect them where you want on your project, on your app, as we will put on the home page. Then continue. You have a quick summary of what you are going to create. Once you're okay with it, create. And no worries, you can edit it later. It will give you your client ID. Copy it to your clipboard, close. And now you are on your project dashboard. Now our project is created, we can clone the repository of the example app. Code, copy the URL. In a terminal, git clone, paste the URL, then file, open folder and open it. We run yarn to install the dependencies and then yarn start to start the project. 
But we get this error because we are missing Zitadel React. I guess they made an update and forgot to add it in the example app. Simply yarn add and paste what is missing. Then yarn start again. Now our project is running, but we should get an error after login because we didn't set the URL where our instance is located, neither our client ID. Let's open the file app.tsx and you can see it is defined here. Of course, for a project with a team and for production, write the different keys in an environment file. But here for the demo, it's perfectly fine to fit it here. Authority is the URL of our instance. Head to your project, switch to URLs, and you can copy authorization endpoint. Then paste it, and I don't think you need the whole path. Just leave it to dot app slash. Then get back the client ID, paste it, and let's try it. All right, so now we can try login. We can type our login name and register. We already have the root admin user, but we won't be using this one. We can go to users and create them manually. So if I hit new, enter my email address, my username, given name. Let's say that my email is verified by default. I can set an initial password or I can leave the user type it directly. I will keep it like this. You can add additional information, the phone number, and then create. Now, if I try to log in with that new user, hit next. It's asking me for a code that I receive in my email address and to define my password. Instead of using it now, I will later create a user with Google. But now let's focus on the UI. Currently, it's very basic. We have no logo, no identity, and we even have powered by Zitadel. We can change this by going to organization, then appearance. And here we have the settings to adjust the branding. So currently my laptop is in light mode. So I need to switch to light mode and I'm able to change the background color. For example, I can put a pure white or choose a light gray. I can change the primary color to match the LSTO colors. I can take this strong orange. The warning color when you have an error and the text color. The best thing to do is to add your logos. Let's do it here. The logo and the icon for the tab. Perfect. Well, I didn't have the transparent one, but it's better to use it. Once you are happy with it, apply the configuration. Be sure that you do the light and dark one. I think we should do something more with advanced behavior. We can hide the watermark. So your users won't know that you are using a solution. Now let's try to reload this page. And we have the styling. Well, the gray wasn't the best ID, but we have our logo, the color changed. And we don't have the powered by Zitadel below. We change the branding settings, but you can also change the settings of the behavior. Currently, there are some rules on the password. And of course, you have a full control on what you are able to do. You can go to login behavior and security. You can even allow your users to have passwordless. You can force the user to use multi-factor authentication. This is the case on your instance, but this is not the case by default to all the users. Let's check it. So we will see when we create an account with Google that it will prompt it also to our new user. You can also define the lifespan of your passwords, of when your users still be logged in, and so on. You can also decide if users are allowed to register or not. Maybe you would have a different process to have new users. Maybe onboard them manually or import them from a file or use another platform to create users. If that's the case, you should uncheck user registration allowed. If you do it, users are only allowed to log in. Let's put it back, save. You can also adjust the password rules. Currently, you need at least eight characters. And here are the rules, but you can add more characters and choose to simplify or complexify the rules. Now, the most interesting part is the identity providers. You have a nice list of identity providers, just as Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Apple, 
but it's also compatible with OIDC, LADAP, and SAML, which means you can connect it to any providers. For this demo, we will be using Google. We arrive here, and we have this I button to help us create our app. It redirects us to the documentation, so we know all the steps to be able to create our app for a Google authentication. To register a new client, we need to go to this page, click on Create Credentials, and choose OAuth Client ID. Create Credential, OAuth Client ID. Then choose Web Application, and we need to paste the URL of our Citadel callback URL. This is the URL we need to copy. So we choose Web Application. We name our application Demo Citadel React. And in Authorize Redirect URIs, we paste the address and hit create. We get a client ID that we can paste here and a client secret that we paste here. Now we can create our app. Don't worry, I will kill the app so these secrets are not so much leaked. Once done, you need to activate the identity provider and save. Now on our organization, we have in the identity providers, Google that is enabled. If we reload the login page, we have what we had before and we now are able to log in with Google. If I choose to sign in to our newly created app, it will allow me to create an account with the credentials that I have. I can hit register. Now, because we enabled and forced multi-factor authentication, we need to enable it. So I will choose my device again, like what we did before, a laptop, add security key. I use my touch ID. And next, now we are redirected to our app and it got the information of our account. You can see I don't have any roles. The roles are attached to projects. So we need to go to project, react demo, and we need to create new roles. Let's do it new. Let's say we have two roles, admin, we name it admin. We don't attach it to a group and super admin. Our regular users won't have a role attached to them. We save it. And then to attach roles to our user, we go to authorizations, new, and we select the user we want them to have those roles. So the one I just made was this user. And continue. I select the roles. I will check both and save. Now you can see the users that have authorizations. It will require me to log out and log in again. Let's do it. Login, Google. Now it's asking me the multi-factor authentication, verify. Automatically, it's asking me this. This is the only one I set up. I do it. I'm correctly logged in and it will redirect me. And this time I have the two roles associated to me. When your users log in, what you can do is to perform actions on them. Those are scripts that you would run on a backend to call an API to do some DB updates on some users. And depending on your project, you don't want to create users manually or to assign the authorizations manually. For this, you can have the whole control using the API from Ditadel. The documentation explain all endpoints and what you can do. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Zitadel with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, I recommend you watch this video, available here.